As a screenwriter, you have two primary jobs, craft a story and tell it well. But a lot of writers think that telling it well is just having a robust vocabulary or having engaging characters to hang out with, or maybe even writing in some highly stylized way. Okay, now stop barricading. Let me First of all, keys. stop cussing because you're not good at it. But there are actually some specific things that you can do to engage your audience more, to be a better storyteller. And I'm gonna share with you two powerful, powerful storytelling tools that you can employ in any story for the screen that you're wanting to tell. Hold my pie. Sir, hold it or wear it. The tools themselves are called advertising and elements of the future. But before we pull them apart and explain what they are and how you can use them, there's a couple of things that you need to know. And by the way, I just did one of them. First, storytelling, the very act of it, has to do with the audience's experience of participating in the story. So you have a story, but in the telling of that story, you're inviting the audience to participate in it, to become part of it in a sense. And if they participate, then you are an engaging storyteller. If they stay to the end and they're satisfied with their experience, well, now you're a successful storyteller. But if they don't participate or if they choose to bail at any point along the way, well, you're either unsuccessful or maybe they just weren't the right audience for your story. How many robots have ever snatched a purse? John, the thing is running down the uh, snow. Uh, mm -mm. How many robots in the world have ever committed a crime? No, define crime. Answer my question. None, John. But effectively using storytelling tools are ways to force some engagement with the audience. And if you want to use the term manipulate, I mean, that's fine, because really that's what you're doing. You're stacking the deck in your favor and encouraging or even motivating, manipulating the audience to participate. And they don't even know you're doing it. Yes, there are some tools that are overt and in your face when it comes to screenwriting, but many of the tools that you have available are subtle and your job as a screenwriter and storyteller is to choose the right tools for the story you have is there something you want to say to me i'm sorry my responses are limited you must ask the right questions why would you kill yourself that detective is the right question the second thing before we start pulling apart these tools is that storytelling tools are always impacting the audience. Some of them, though, also impact the characters in the story. So they're always impacting the audience, but some of them also impact the characters. And in fact, at times, the characters are fully aware of what's going on. I mean, they don't obviously realize that they're doing and participating in a storytelling device to engage an audience but they are fully aware of the events going on and the tool that's being used, even though they wouldn't say it's a tool. And these two tools that we're gonna talk about, these two powerful tools, advertising and elements of the future, are that way. The characters are fully aware of what's going on, which is why I said earlier that you can use either of these in any story for the screen that you're wanting to tell. And that's one reason it makes them so powerful is you can always find a way to utilize them. So you're a shrink, huh? My ex-wife would sure be glad I'm talking to you. You don't know her, do you? I'm sorry, are you being funny? I guess not. Okay, onto the tools themselves. First is advertising. Now, advertising in many ways is what you might think of when you think of advertising. Someone telling others what they expect to happen. And the easiest way to think of this is just imagine and think of your own calendar and then imagine you telling your friend about what you have coming up. You know, like something like, well, on Wednesday, I'm having lunch with Carson, and then later that afternoon, I have my annual review. That's advertising. You are telling your friend, you are advertising what you're going to be doing. And if your life were a movie, you know, your lunch with Carson, well, that might get moved. The annual review may or may not happen because your boss gets called to some other meeting at the last minute, but these are the things you expect to happen. And that's really what advertising is, the expectation of a character of what is or is not going to happen. And you might be thinking, well, okay, Jake, that seems fine. I mean, it seems pretty simple though for a storytelling tool. I mean, how does that even work? So let's back up a second. You're having lunch with your friend, your friend who cares about you and wants what is best for you. And they know that you've been longing for a promotion and a raise. They are rooting for you to get it. And so when you tell them about your upcoming review meeting, well, they're now invested. And when you see them at dinner on Wednesday, 
after your review. What do you think is going to be one of the first questions they ask about? Yeah. How did the review go? You know, did you get it? And because they care about what happens to you, they now want to know the outcome of the advertising that you did. So by advertising to your friends, you gave them something to look forward to or to worry about for you. And now they want to stick around to find out what will happen. Detective, the room was security locked. No one came or went. You saw that yourself. Doesn't that mean this has to be suicide? Yeah. Unless the killer's still in here. You're joking, right? In storytelling terms, you're creating in your friend the two emotions that drive all stories, hope and fear. They find out about your review, they already know it's important for you, and because they want you to succeed, they are hopeful you're gonna get the promotion, and they're fearful that you won't. You've heard it, badly. Where's it going? Where? It needs to repair itself. And until those two emotions are resolved, well, they're gonna stay tuned in to you. They wanna know what's gonna happen. So the only prerequisite for using the tool of advertising in a story is that the audience has to care about what happens to your character. Notice I didn't say they have to like your character. They don't have to like your character. They might actually care about what happens to your character because they want to see your character get punished for something that they've done. You know, just like when you hope that people in your life who are rivals or enemies or just plain jerks get what's coming to them. You care about what happens to them whether you like them or not. So if we're talking about the audience caring for your characters, they kind of have to be in one of two camps and not the third. They have to either love your character, they have to hate your character, but they cannot be indifferent towards your character. I mean, hate is not the opposite of love. These things are in a triangle of tension. And for storytelling, two thirds of this triangle is just fine. Personally, I don't care if people hate my characters or love them. It's a problem if they feel indifferent to them. So I want you to feel one way if you're reading a story of mine, but I just don't want you to feel indifferent. And in real life, yeah, hate and indifference, those are problems that we have. And we as people, we gotta learn to do better with one another. But in a story, hate and love, those are okay because the audience then cares about what happens to the character. And by caring what happens to a character, as soon as that character advertises something, now we, the audience, are invested because we hope or fear for that character. And we stay tuned in to the story because you, the storyteller, have engaged our emotions by using a simple tool of advertising. Does thinking you're the last sane man on the face of the earth make you crazy? Because if it does, maybe I am. Gotcha. But don't just think of advertising as one character sharing their personal calendar with another character. I mean, it can be lots of things. A mom to their teenage son. Don't forget to pick up your sister from practice today. A boss to employees. The quarter ends next Friday and whoever has the most sales is gonna get an all expense paid trip to Turks and Caicos and the prime parking spot. Or a sports announcer. No one could have predicted the Cinderella team to make it to the finals, but next week they play for the championship. Or a teacher. There will be a test tomorrow, and if you fail it, you're out of the program. Or even a literal advertisement. So goodbye to lengthy upgrades and service calls. An uplink to USR Central Computer provides this state-of-the-art robot with new programs daily. The Nestor Class 5 is tomorrow's robot today. Most of the time when advertising is used, it's being used to set our expectations of what is going to happen. It lets us hope and fear some things, but it also lets us get a little comfortable because we can kind of be like, okay, I kind of know where this train is going. And this is where you can really start to subvert some things, which is when you alter the expectations. I mean, the employee who thinks they've got all day to prepare for their review shows up to the office at eight o'clock. They've got a message from their boss that's waiting for them. Something's come up. We need to move your review to 8.30 a.m. I'll see you in half an hour. And the employee is like, it's eight o'clock and they start to panic. And we start to panic with them because we know how important the meeting is. But they have no time to prepare. It's in half an hour. And now we're really hopeful and really worried about what will happen. So when you alter the expectations, it not only creates problems for the 
character, which it should, it also amplifies the emotions the audience is already feeling about the thing being advertised. And advertising is a simple thing you can include in your story without it feeling clunky. I mean, telling someone else what is going on is a natural thing for us as people to do. I'm going to the store. And you've heard advertising at some point today, I'm guessing you have, or you will, from someone in your everyday life. If you just replay what's happened, if you're watching this at the end of the day, hey, what happened? Well, somebody told me I was doing this. They were advertising, and we're usually fine with that. A demo bot just tore through Lanning's house, with me still inside. It's highly improbable. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure it is. <sighs> what do you know about the ghosts? In the machine. And if this circumstance here were a story and, you know, someone says like, hey, I'm, I'm going to go to the store, we'd expect the next scene to be at the store. But what if it isn't? What if instead of the store, which we see our character drive past, we see them then turn down a back alley for a drug deal. And then we find out that they're actually the dealer. And this is the other way to subvert expectations is to have characters lie about what they're planning to do. Lie about what they're advertising. Now, in real life, lying is bad, don't do that. But for characters, lying is a great thing for them to do because it subverts the expectations of the advertising. Hi, you've reached Susan. I'm not available right now. Please leave a message. Calvin, the NS5s are destroying the older robots. That's what Landing wanted me to see. Look, we got... Who was it? Wrong number, ma'am. So advertising about what is going to happen or what characters expect to happen is a powerful storytelling tool. And if you can then subvert that expectation, it makes it even more powerful. You are the dumbest smart person I have ever met in my life. But the second powerful storytelling tool in our list of two, elements of the future. Often it's paired with advertising, but they're not the same thing. They are two distinct tools, you can use one without the other. And just to clarify, advertising is about what a character knows or expects will happen. Elements of the future are about what a character hopes or fears is going to happen as a result of a future event. Now, I can engage in some advertising and express my expectation for you that you will hit the like button because you're finding value, that you will subscribe if you haven't done so, or drop a comment below about what's helpful in this video, or if you have a question that you want me to tackle in a future video, you can put that in the comments below. I could even advertise my Patreon page as an opportunity for you to support me and this channel. And that would be advertising. But when I add in that I hope that you will do these things because it will help others find this channel, and that I'm worried that if you don't, others who need to learn about these tools so they can improve their storytelling won't find this channel if you don't do those things, well, that's an element of the future. And to those of you who've satisfied my hopes and alleviated my fears, I extend heartfelt gratitude. Thank you for interacting in some way. It really does help me out. I really do appreciate it. So back to our employee who desperately wants a raise and they have a job review. The fact that the review is taking place, that's advertising. And because advertising is engaged, the audience then hopes or fears about what may or may not happen. At the same time, the character themselves can also be hopeful or fearful of what will happen in that event. And if the emotions of the audience are engaged with that, and if our emotions align with the characters, okay, now the audience is even more engaged in the outcome. What is better though, is if the audience is hopeful for one outcome, while the character is hopeful for something else. I am the dumbest dumb person on the face of the earth. Or that what the audience wants is not what the character wants that makes us as an audience even more engaged. So you kind of think of this as like you're turning up the dial. Every time you engage one of these elements, you're kind of enhancing the dial of audience engagement. It's forcing the audience to be engaged more. And by creating in the audience an emotion where they want one thing and the character wants something different, this emotional dissonance for the audience, that lets the audience on one hand empathize with the character because we care about what happens to them and we can understand why they'd want the promotion, why they'd want the raise, but 
After having spent some time with that character and what we know of the work environment, we also know that this raise and promotion would be very bad for the character. So we're kind of hoping they don't get the promotion or the raise. And now we are really torn and conflicted. And we, as an audience, don't like those feelings. And we are always working to resolve them in our own life and especially when we're watching stories. Deactivate. Commence emergency shutdown. We are attempting to avoid human losses during this transition. <laughs> You know, somehow, I told you so, just doesn't quite say it. And as a result, we are now fully engaged in the story because we want to know the outcome. And we know either we or the character is going to be disappointed at the outcome of the event. We just don't know which one. So we got to watch and find out and we stay engaged to find out which one of us is gonna be more disappointed, and then we move on from there. So the first piece of using elements of the future is that it further heightens the audience's emotional engagement with the story. We're turning up the dial. And the elements of the future can be used for anything. So anytime a character hopes or fears for what may or may not happen, that's an element of the future. You know, I've seen on TV, they're giving away some of them new robots in the lottery. You know, GG. Those robots don't do anybody any good. Of all the people on God's earth, you should know better. Sometimes the stuff that comes out of your mouth. You listening to me, Dale? But another piece of using elements of the future is how you interject that into the story. So if you're writing a fantasy or a sci-fi or even a historical fiction, you can include elements of the future through characters like shaman, witches, prophets, preachers, oracles. Those are often the ones who are predicting an emotional outcome of what may or may not happen down the road. Now they aren't advertising what's gonna happen. They are warning about what might happen. They are creating hope, they're creating fear about possible future events. But you also don't have to use mystical characters. I mean, if they're not connected in some way to the spirit or other world of your story, typically if you're using this, they're a character who has a steady moral or ethical compass, a teacher, a counselor, a scientist. Is there a problem with the three laws? The three laws are perfect. Why would you build a robot that can function without them? The three laws will lead to only one logical outcome. What? What outcome? Revolution. Whose revolution? That, Detective, is the right question. And either way, this character is someone the audience and the character is going to trust. I mean, they have a solid opinion. And we should then be worried about or hopeful for whatever they predict is going to happen. John. Don't do this to me. I am asking you for five minutes. What if I'm right? And typically, elements of the future are paired with advertising. Yes, that happens if the advertising is character based. So, for example, a character advertising what they're going to do that evening. That might be paired with elements of the future. But if the advertising is world based, it's just something that's going to happen in the universe of the story. You don't really have to have elements of the future. You might but you don't have to, but you do if the character is intricately tied to those events in some way. So advertising and elements of the future are two very powerful storytelling tools that you can use to engage your audience and tell stories that matter. But maybe you want more stuff like this. And if you've got a couple of screenplays in your pocket, you've done a few, and you know you're serious about becoming a master storyteller, Click the link below to learn more information and to book a free call with me to apply for the Screenplay Navigator. I give you tools like these to fill your toolbox so you can master the craft of telling stories from idea generation all the way through to finished script. So if you're interested in transforming yourself, consider joining the Screenplay Navigator and partner with others who are already on the path to becoming master storytellers. And ultimately, I just wanna help you become a better writer and storyteller. And if you found any value and you haven't already, 
please be sure to like, subscribe, bell, all of that. I really do appreciate it. And when you go to tell a story, use advertising, use elements of the future, and be sure to tell a story that matters. See you later. That would be to fade out. Yeah, I see.